Welcome in everyone to the final regular season episode of Big 12 Big Football. As always, I'm Aaron Pryor. It's an exciting yet sad time of the year. Exciting because we've got bowl games and championship season on the horizon. Sad because this is the final weekend of the regular season and the Big 12 championship game is still yet to be determined. We're going to sort that out this weekend to figure out which two teams are headed to Arlington next Saturday. As we look at the standings, Oklahoma remains perched at the top, 7-1 in conference play. Their game against West Virginia will determine a portion of the Big 12 title game, and we'll get to that here momentarily. Texas still very much alive in the big picture. A win at Kansas for the Longhorns will put Texas in the championship game, and as I mentioned earlier, the winner of Oklahoma-West Virginia will join them. So let's dive into it. It's a game many people circled on the calendar when the schedule was announced last year. Oklahoma and its 19-game true road game winning streak will meet West Virginia in Morgantown with a title game spot on the line. There's a chance that the Sooners and Mountaineers could play each other in a rematch regardless of who wins, but that would require Kansas defeating Texas in Lawrence. The Big 12's two Heisman contending quarterbacks, Kyler Murray and Will Greer, come into the game as the clear and away best quarterbacks in the league. Murray leads the Big 12 in completion percentage, touchdowns, and passing efficiency, where he's also second in the country. Greer is first in yards per game, good for fourth in the NCAA. He's second in touchdowns in the Big 12 and second in passing efficiency. Kyler and Will were named finalists for the Maxwell Award given to the nation's top overall player. Murray was named a finalist for the Davy O'Brien Award this week. The O'Brien is given to the nation's top quarterback. And look, I can go over and over the stats, but the bottom line here is that Greer and Murray have both been exceptionally good this year, and the offenses have been insane. The Sooners currently lead the nation in total offense, putting up 576 yards per game. WVU is fourth in the nation in passing yards and team passing efficiency. Dana Holgerson said this week that when you play either of the Oklahoma schools, there's kind of a right out the wave mentality, simply because the offenses are so talented and explosive, and the challenge of playing Oklahoma isn't lost on the head Mountaineer. They recruit very well. That's a special place. I've been to Norman, uh, you know, obviously a lot over, over, the, the, over the last 18 years. I've, I've been going to Norman. They do an outstanding job. You know, all the respect in the world for, for Bob Stoops and how he built uh, uh, OU. Uh, and then Lincoln's done a great job too. Um, you know, me and Lincoln were at Texas Tech together. Uh, my kids were in his wedding. You know, I cherish his, his wife, Caitlin, who was my nanny for like five years. I know him very well and he's doing a great job. Great, uh, great young coach and that's a special player. It's, it's, it's hard to beat teams that are well coached and have the best players. And look, there's a ton of things I could say about Will Greer as well, but I don't think I could have said it any better than Lincoln Riley did this week on the Big 12 Coaches Teleconference. Hey, smart, you know, he knows where he wants to go to the football. He's extremely, extremely accurate. I uh, think he's throwing the ball, um, throwing the ball well. Um, and, you know, he knows who his playmakers are. Um, so he's got a good feel for for the game and, and, and making plays, not making many, you know, not many bad decisions throughout the year. So, you know, easily one of the top guys in the country. So what does this game come down to? Two things, and I think they're pretty simple to figure out. Who can capitalize on the first mistake? And to be honest, who can force a punt and then capitalize on that change of possession as well? This game is going to be a track meet, and it's all about who can take advantage of the limited opportunities to swing the game back in whichever team's favor. Texas controls its own destiny to get into the Big 12 title game with an 11 a.m. kick and Lawrence Friday morning. And we may not know until game time who QB1 is after Sam Ellinger re-aggravated his shoulder last weekend. We saw Shane Bouchelle come in against Baylor when Sam initially injured that shoulder, and the Horns, for the most part, didn't miss much of a beat on offense. He went 20 of 34 in that game for 184 yards and a touchdown. Against Iowa State last week when Ellinger went down, Bouchelle was 10 for 10 for 89 yards and a score. The last time the Horns played in Lawrence, Deonta Foreman ran for 250 yards and two scores in the game. Last week against the league's top rushing defense in Iowa State, Texas ran the ball 46 times for 179 yards and a touchdown. I don't expect much to change in the way of the Texas offense this week, but the defense is going to have to handle Mr. 7 yards per carry himself, Puka Williams. The sensational freshman was added again last week, setting a career high with 252 yards on 15 big carries, including a touchdown pass in the game. That's right, a touchdown pass. He's the first Jayhawk to rush for 1,000 yards since 2013, and the 12th player in program history to do so. We obviously knew he was a, a really good football player. Um, he has certainly even exceeded the expectation that we had. And you know, he's thrown a pass, he's caught a pass, and he's ran, ran a ball in the end zone for touchdowns. And I mean, for a freshman to come in and do that, and he does it with some electrifying runs, 
man, I just, I feel so fortunate to have been able to witness it, witness it, to be alongside him on this, on this team with the, he's, he's only a better person than he is a player, which should speak volumes about what type of kid he is. A look at the rest of the schedule. Saturday, Baylor and Texas Tech will lock up with the winner clinching a bowl game berth. Kansas State's got to go up to Ames and beat the Cyclones if they want to make it into a bowl game this year. And TCU has to do the same at home against Oklahoma State, 7 p.m. on Fox. Top plays from last weekend now. Number three, how about some blocked punts? Pass in the third. Blocked punt. And this is going to go out of bounds at the 32-yard line. How about that? Kansas State blocking the punt. Pressure. Oh, yeah. They got it. Boom. It's on the ground. Picked up by Bolton. It's touchdown. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jalen Rager. Trying to set up a little bubble screen to Rager. Rager across the middle, bust one. Rager still on his feet. There he goes. Jalen. To the house, 65 yards. And number one, game winner, Belenikoff Award finalist, Tylen Wallace, take it away. Coming after, he throws quickly. It's caught. It is a touchdown. As always, thanks so much for watching. Now fans, be sure to be right back here next Wednesday, November 28th at 2 p.m. Central Time as we're going to announce the 2018 Big 12 Football Players of the Year live wherever you're watching. We're gonna do it live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Big12Sports.com, so we'll see you then. For the Big 12 Conference, I'm Aaron Pryor.